So we're back on the battlefield for another Through the Ages video today. The last video got like a thousand comments, so thank you all for putting in your suggestions. But the one that caught my eye, the one that interested me the most, was the M60. This thing has been an ever-present part of the franchise throughout the years, appearing in six different titles with the Battlefield name on it. And in two of those games, it actually appeared twice as different variants. It's safe to say this is a weapon that we've probably all used at least once throughout the years. Let's start then with Bad Company 2 Vietnam. One of the two variants here within Bad Company 2, the M60 took on a very war-torn look and it differed quite a lot from the other variant that's available in the base game. The iron sight was different here, less obtrusive on the screen than in the base game, and I think it was a change that was made to give the player a little bit more sight so they could see more on their screen because it was a very, very big iron sight available in the base game. And in Vietnam, you can't equip optics to your weapon unless you're using a sniper. The weapon here was actually wrapped up in a woodland camo as well. You might just be able to see it under all the scarring, but it was more or less unnoticeable if you weren't looking for it. It did share statistics that were almost identical to the weapon that's in the base game, only here in Vietnam it was slightly more powerful, at least after the base game one had been nerfed after a couple of patches. The M60 was the fourth LMG in the medic class to be unlocked, requiring a player to get 25,000 points, and actually, for a time, like I said, it was the most powerful of all LMGs on offer, and it did a maximum of 25 damage. That got nerfed pretty hard down to a lower level, and it finally ended up doing a max damage of 15.7, up close. Now by today's standards in BF4 where some LMGs do 33 and 34 damage, this does make it look pretty weak, but Bad Company 2 was a very different game. The whole damage model was significantly lower in impact than it is today. Focus on hip fire aim was more of an accepted playstyle, and overall the gameplay was just slower, meaning lower damage figures were fairly normal. One unique fact that I like to tell people about Bad Company 2 actually, and this sort of ties into the gameplay style I was just talking about, LMGs become more accurate the longer you sustain your fire. Well, that's actually not correct. Technically, the recoil decreases with every shot fired within a burst, giving players more control over their accuracy, but this feature didn't actually affect the bullet spread or the deviation. That stayed the same. So this kind of mechanic meant somebody who really used the M60 to sustain their fire, suppress an area or an enemy, the recoil would decrease with every shot, which meant it was easier to focus on what you were aiming at. Moving on to Battlefield 3 now, and we come to a very interesting point in the M60's history. The weapon almost became a middle ground between all of the weapons that were available, all the machine guns in this game. It offered a higher damage model than weapons like the M27 or the RPK, and it actually competed with them because the recoil wasn't too bad in BF3, and in some cases it could actually outperform the heavy machine guns like the M240 Bravo or the PKP. And even though in BF3 the M60 is considered an LMG, it's available in the support class, it was kind of balanced in such a way that it made it more useful if you were moving around the map. It didn't suit the LMG playstyle, which is sticking a bipod on and laying down fire. The rate of fire just wasn't really fast enough to deal the damage that you wanted to. So you could stick a foregrip on there, which would help with the horizontal recoil. And if you moved around a bit and became almost like a mobile support soldier, I think you were much more effective here. It was one of the harder weapons to unlock though, coming in second to last spot in the support class, needing 130,000 points scored. And due to its significantly lower rate of fire than other machine guns, and the fact that it could be outperformed by most of the light machine guns in the class, I don't really think the weapon shone as brightly here as it did in Bad Company 2. And finally, Battlefield 4. And this is where the M60 really got some love. 
Interestingly, the weapon was left out of the base game. It wasn't available when Battlefield 4 released. It was added in the second Assault expansion. That was the DLC that remastered four Battlefield 3 maps and introduced five fan favorite weapons from the past. And you needed to complete the Dust Devil assignment to unlock it. Once again, with the M60 here in BF4, recoil was a big factor. And if you either had the compensator or the muzzle brake unlocked, you'd be silly not to use it on the weapon. That would either affect the vertical or the horizontal recoil, depending on what you attached, but it meant that you could focus on one recoil up and down or side to side, and the other one would kind of be taken care of for you. Beyond the standard weapon though, the M60 got a lot of love from Dice LA. Introduced with the Community Operations map called Operation Outbreak, Dice LA added the M60 ULT into the game as a battle pickup. You can find it next to the crashed heli in the middle of the map, and it comes with a 150 round box magazine containing explosive shots. This means the weapon is extremely powerful against infantry, it's got splash damage as well, they are explosive rounds, and finally, it can do damage to vehicles just the same way that the 50 cal can. The only caveat, you could only fire it from the hip, which was a reference to Rambo. Whether the bad company grenade smiley pin on the side is any hint to a future title, I guess we'll have to wait and see. But overall, the M60 went from bog standard to badass overnight. People would be queuing up on servers just to get a go with this thing. The M60 is probably one of DICE's most iconic weapons that's been in the Battlefield series, featuring everywhere that it should have been featured, all the way from Battlefield Vietnam to the present day Battlefield 4. Make sure you suggest what weapon should come next on Through the Ages, leave me some comments below, and while you're down there, drop me a like as well. But until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.